separate at birth. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dave, we're here with little Stewie Pug, uh, a very good friend of mine, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about using food to get focus. Uh, but first of all, I want to tell a little story about Stewie. Uh, we were swimming with the dogs up at Hetton Park uh, last year, and uh, we were teaching the pugs and the Bostons how to swim, taking them in and letting them swim to the shore, which is always a good exercise we like to teach the dogs. And um, I noticed Stewie was messing about with a some feathers on the side of the lake um, and I got a bit sick of telling him to leave them alone and I thought well, why don't I use it thinking of what Dave always tells me about using whatever the dog's interested in at that time to motivate the dog picked up a big feather walked off into the water and lo and behold little Stewie followed me into the water and uh, swam of his own accord just to get the feather didn't he a clever fella but anyway we're going to talk about food now and using food okay so let's do that okay well here we've got some uh... Lily's Kitchen, truly natural little liver rewards, and they look delicious. <laughs> um, it's a resource. Whether we're using affection, a toy, or food, it's a resource. It's whatever the dog that we are working with desires, and importantly, what it desires at that moment in time. Because you often see people proffering something that looks hugely desirable uh, to the dog, but the dog is focusing on something else instead. And um, so it's, it's whatever the dog is interested in. And for Stewie, I'm told he loves these little liver rewards. And we can see, yes, he thinks that's lovely. So we just let him have a little nibble of that. Just a little nibble. We're not going to let him have the whole thing. Or perhaps we are. Um, yes, we managed to salvage that and my finger. So now I'm sure if Dom just pops a little Stewie down, for example, for, for a moment, you'll see the interest Stewie has. Now I know a lot of people are now going to be sitting and saying, well obviously it's because he's got the food. The thing is, we have to start somewhere. This dog doesn't know me from Adam, he's never met me before in his life. So, why would he want to do any of these things for me? But by um, building association through, through repetition and, and success, letting him get rewarded, he'll eventually start to perform for me. At this stage it doesn't really matter what I'm doing with him, I'm just luring him around with this little bit of food and that's causing him to follow me. So we can use this for all sorts of things. We could hide this on the ground for him to search for. We could um, put it in our pocket and get somebody else to hold him and do a recall. Come on! And when he comes to us, we reward him with a little piece of the food. The important thing is not to give them too much, just let them have little tasters. Stewie, come! That's lovely little boy. Come on, Stewie! Stewie. So here, getting him used to walking with us on the lead, luring him. Nothing wrong with luring, as long as, quite quickly, we start to fade out actually handling the, the lure. So eventually we can get the dog to follow us without the lure, and then yes, good boy, conditioned reinforcer, the signal, the yes, to tell him that he's going to get a piece of food. Mm -hmm. 